to strap in and get ready. The leaders in NRL Supercoach are incoming. Bringing you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight NRL Show with your hosts, Brain, Matrix, and Whisperer. Hello and welcome back to the Insight NRL Show. Uh, this will be a little Q&A with, uh, with Whisperer and I. Um, we just thought, you know, we're heading into, look, we're just heading into, would you say the pinnacle? And um, are you going to stay up and watch Bahrain tonight? Um, yeah, look, it's so good. It's Verstappen. He's there at number one. We've got Leclerc at two. Um, mate, there's a lot of questions that are going to come in. Yeah, I mean, is Oscar Piastri in your in your F1 fantasy team, man? That's what everyone's <laughs> here. Um, no, nah, look, it's obviously, yeah, Christmas Eve for, for all of us. Uh, it's a little bit different this year with the split teamless and the split rounds. But, I mean, there's footy back tomorrow, and that's the main thing. And, um yeah, I, I really hope that Vegas works because I think it's going to be really cool and it will also give me an excuse to go to Vegas next year and I can write it off as a business trip, which which will also be nice. <laughs> Mate, I don't want to be a dick, but if I'm going to Vegas, um, I'm probably going to watch NFL or something considering I can drive an hour down the road and watch an NRL game. Of course, of course, but, but you can't watch Ezra Mam in the Nor- in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but no, yeah, you're right. We're we're gonna be here today doing a lot of uh, questions because I don't know about you, but I've been getting slammed with questions about people's teams, and it's just much easier to do one big overall Q and A rather than trying to answer a million DMs. We can do it in a video format, and then everyone can come back to it because I'm sure a lot of people have the same conundrums and the same questions. Yep. No, I am with you. Um... How are you happy with the? We're just waiting for a few more questions to come in. Are you happy with like the structure of your team, or do you think it'll change from now till tomorrow lunchtime? And do you no, think you'll change no. it again before the following week. I think I think tomorrow's set in stone. Um, the guys that I want will be there. It's it really comes down to cheapies, like what we get next week. Like I've I've planned pretty much for what I think is going to happen. Like there's no huge like cheapies I need to be named to to come through. Um there's like I don't have Billy Army for feeder. I no longer have Kane Bradley. But like if these guys get named then fantastic. But I haven't structured my team in a way that I'm relying on them. Um but our teams are are out. Um they are available over on Inside Unlimited, which is just 25 bucks a year basically. And that's not just NRL, that's AFL, NBL, uh, BBL, you get access to all the experts teams, their trades each week. Uh, you get you know unlimited questions to us. You get uh, an exclusive channel for all of the experts involved as well. Um, but also, yeah, the Insight World Cup is probably the the main thing and and the most important thing as to what we're going to be doing this year. And and twenty five bucks definitely just gets you there or thereabouts for that. The Inside Fantasy World Cup is a collective twelve month tournament where your scores across all four major sports are going to be accumulative. Accumulative. I don't know what the word is, but they're going to be put accumulated. together. Accumulated. Yeah, that accumulated, and they're gonna be put together, uh, and then there's gonna be an overall winner at the end of the BB at the end of the NBL season, which will be late February next year. So it's gonna be a marathon, and I know that you're definitely gonna be in the mix with uh, with all four sports. Obviously, a uh, a huge NBL fan, but um, yeah, unlimited. You know, you and I have leaned on the other experts for sports that we don't know. Yeah. So it's not just um, not just the guys out there. We we definitely need it as well. Yeah, I need it for AFL mainly. Um, go all right. Won a head-to-head comp in BBL. Um, yeah, obviously 400th in NBL. Feel pretty good about that. That was not planned. Me wearing my Bullets jersey today, and um, yeah, live and breathe the NRL. But let's start digging into some of these questions, and I'll throw the first one to you, mate. Um, who is the best mid partner? To sorry, the best mid to partner Arrow at front row forward. Uh, this is from Anthony McElroy. He currently has May there, looking for four hundred and fifty k or less. Oh, like front row forward is just t- it's it's really what your your risk tolerance is because I, I genuinely think they're all gonna do within three points of each other. Like you pick your guy, you know, they may average 48. They may average 51. Like, I don't think it's going to be a huge thing. Um, I think you got guys like Griffin Neem, you know, he's 22 this year. I think he really takes a step up with all the injuries that the Cowboys have had. 
Uh, Terrell May, obviously there or thereabouts. I think he's going to get minutes regardless whether he's starting or the bench. Totola is fine. I think he's probably the most boring pick out of the lot. Uh, and then, I don't know about you, I can't look at a Lolo. I know a lot of people are, but I just, I think it's dead. I think the Jason Tamalolo thing is dead. I'm okay to look though. Like, I'm okay to like swallow my words in three weeks time. If we are getting good Lolo, not mid Lolo, then I take it. But like, I'm not going to start the season with Lolo. I don't really hate doing two rabbits front row forwards like even you know Kepi's obviously a second rower that has front row forward jewel yeah yeah i just don't like going either one uh palace is dead if i'm being completely honest i am gonna go really low in front row forward and maybe have like a 200k bloke like sam hughes somebody along those lines and bolster my second row forwards because i think what you can get out of a 400k second rower is a lot better than what you can get out of a 400k front rower. And yes, I probably am going to have too many front rowers at the start. We also have a couple of Tigers that I'm not playing this week. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to lean that way. Yeah, and then you've also got the emergence of Spencer Lenu. I mean, obviously there was a massive quote that came out today from Trent Robinson, uh, which read as, the older he gets, the more we want him to keep developing his game by adding 10 to 15 minutes to his game. And that starts tomorrow. Now, that quote sounds great. If you actually go listen to it in full, um, it's more of a, he will build up to 15 minutes. Please don't expect him to just be playing 45 minutes from day one. Um, yep. But I think it's encouraging that that Robinson has you know given him that uh, leap of faith. We know that he hasn't scored particularly well in games over 40 minutes, but in saying that, um, I think with a new club, uh, you know, a new license. Penrith's forwards aren't exactly the most expansive bunch. You've got Isaiah Yo, who is very boring, but very good at what he does. Fisher, Harris, and Liotta, again, both very, very boring middle forwards, but both exceptional at what they do. There wasn't really that license to just throw the hand around. Um, so that might be there. It can't get any worse. Uh, I think Lenu has to be in consideration as well, just based off the confidence that Robertson's obviously got for him this year. Um, but there's a lot of questions about front row forwards. So hopefully that's answered them as a whole. Uh, Matrix is going cheap front row forward too. I'd, I'd love to do it. I just probably don't have the balls this early in the season. If if Hughes comes out and he's playing 35, 40 minutes, then fuck, I'm, I'm all in. But yep. I just I just want to have some kind of stability to start the season. Uh, I Yeah, I live on chaos, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. Um, And it's only changed from, um yeah, maybe me not being as high on, on Royce Hunt uh, Royce the choice in our um in our private chat um yeah the little vote one for Royce um was Royce, making Royce, an appearance Royce the choice um yeah obviously the, the love for Royce Hunt came with with Braden Hamlin Ueli uh out for probably a month with um just off season knee surgery that he hasn't come back from you know he didn't have a full preseason uh and then Fanukan potentially being out but uh, looks like Fanukan's going to be right for round one um and then yeah you're battling with Toby Rudolph Tom Hazelton. Uh, Jesse Williams as well. So there's a few mouths to feed there. But uh, yeah, I-, I was hot on Royce the Choice, but probably not so much now. So there's four or five front row forward questions here. Um, and Logan's got one, like what mid-range cheapy to have as his front row forward one and two. Um, look, I think that we've thrown out some really good answers there. Uh, but the one mainstay that Anthony mentioned in the last question was Arrow, like a like a second row forward on the edge. Um, that you can play in front row forward. Like, do you think Arrow's the pick of them? Yeah, it's like the structure's funny. It's like obviously Haas and Tino. Some people yeah. are looking at Tarpany for that, like that mid six hundreds. Um, but then a lot of people are looking at King and Cotter for the sort of mid five hundreds. And then it drops down to Arrow at, at four sixty, and then it sort of goes from four thirty down to three thirty. So there is some guys in there, but yeah, I'll quickly rattle them off again from cheapest to most expensive. Um, in terms of like preference. So you've got Royce Hunt and then Len- Lenny, I'd prefer him over Hunt. And then you've got Kepi at 380, nice jewel. Let's see what his minutes look like. I think Terrell May uh, is, is is fine. Like if you liked Terrell May before Team List Tuesday, I wouldn't be put off by the Team Lists. Like it wouldn't change my thoughts yeah. on him. I think both edges look like playing close to 80. So yeah, I, I wouldn't see, I, I don't think nothing changed on Terrell May. Like if you were high on him before, you should still be high on him now. Like I've been pretty vocal that I'm not the most keen Terrell May guy, um, but I've been wrong on plenty of things beforehand, but don't let what I say change your mind. That's the the most important thing is always back yourself. If you like him, then then take him. Uh, and then from him, you move up to 
probably a guy like Totola, and then you move to a guy like Griffin Neem uh, at 4.30. Like, I've got no interest in Lolo, not for round one. Like, I'm happy to to give it a couple of weeks and look at it, but not for round one. And then, yeah, you move up to, to Arrow, who looks like he's going to be playing 60, 65 minutes on the edge. Uh, and that's been proven over the last couple of years with Jacob Host even in the side. And he averages like 56 points a game. So there's definitely some value there if Arrow can just get back to what he does uh, on an edge, which is very boring. But if I look down and see Arrow scored 56 points, I'll take it. Yeah, um, that sort of answered some of the Terrell May questions as well in that one. Um, I'm going to grab 404 error pages questions. Uh, thoughts on Fletcher Baker as second r- front row forward? Uh, no. Um, I just don't think the minutes are going to be there at least to start. I'm not scared of him just being there on the bench, but I think, you know, Jensen's going to get plenty more minutes. Uh, now, I, it's just a wait and see. And if it, if he's 300K and he's elite, he's going to be easy to go to. Um, but I've got one for you, mate. Um, your thoughts on Jacob Little at Hooker? Yeah, I mean, I'm keen, obviously. Um, it's <laughs> it's a teamless Tuesday dependent thing. So with Little, like, I would have a way to find 300K or a way to find 180K to get to Appy or to get to Grant. Because if teamless Tuesday doesn't fall your way, and uh, Kyle Holland's named or Marshy's named, like you want to pivot off him because like I'm not keen on a little for 55, 60 minutes. I'm keen on 70 plus and the stats back that up. He averages something like 64 points a game. It's not a huge sample size, um, but we saw from the trial in the second trial, but also in the charity shield looks involved as well. So it's it's one where like if things fall your way, then amazing. Um, I'd even love to try and find a way to have Grant and also Little. Like mm-hmm. from going from hands to little is not that big. So like it's hundred K, yeah. You can go arrow to lend to lend you, and then you can go, you know, hands to little. And I think the jump there isn't that big. Like I think the points jump is is better for for little. So I think it's a teamless Tuesday dependent thing, but yeah, just just make sure you've got an avenue to to get to get off him if it doesn't go well. Yeah, and the worst thing about downgrading somebody like Arrow in this week is he's going to be locked in this Sunday, and we're not going to get Teamless Tuesday uh, for, obviously, the St. George Dragons for another couple of days there, uh, yeah. which is painful. A uh, couple of things in the chat. I mean, uh, we'll go back to front row forwards quickly. Thoughts on Tom Flegler. Um, Sean Clark has put that one in. Flegler Flegler's an interesting one because like, I've not been the biggest fan. I just think there's better value elsewhere. Um, we've spoken about him being, you know, overpriced uh, based off his last three games of the season where he had massive attack output. Um, like, I'm, I'm, I'd be stupid to sit here and say that the injury to Gilbert isn't going to change anything. I, I think he picks up another three minutes, three or four minutes, but I don't think he's picking up like 15, 20, which is what people are hoping for. Um, his PPM has never really aligned. Like, he's, you know, mid-20s now, and he's done this for the last you know, four or five years. Like, we'd have to see 55 minutes for me to be tempted by Flagler. And I just don't see that happening. Like, 55 minutes is a lot for middle to play. And very and very few do it in the NRL. And just based off his you know, historical performances and PPMs, it's I think he's a guy that you can also wait and see on because he's not going to get out of reach. Like, if he, even if he goes 55, 55, 60 in the first three weeks, like, he's, his price rise isn't going to be massive. So he's a guy that I'm keen to just watch as well. Like, at least with Arrow... You've got the stability of longer minutes. You've got a good sample size of about 28 games of him on an edge. Like, there's more of a sample for Arrow than what there is for Flegler. Um, one thing I think about Flegler, too, is his price is inflated as well. Um, so, yeah, because he had such a good run at the end of last year. Um, yeah, look, I'm not keen on Flegler at all. He's never really proven. He's last year's Christian Well. He's this year's. Last year's Christian Welch. Yeah, with a lot of hype just being very relatively mid. Like I'd love to yeah. see I'd love to see Flegler like kick on because like we we'd love him for origin. Like he's yeah. he's very much an origin player. But like from a super coach standpoint, I just want to see it before I take the plunge. Like it's it's a good bit of coin. Like it's not like he's three eighty. Like he's not like he's a cappy price. Um yeah. I just I would just wait first and foremost. Hey mate, Kings are in the chat. Satili or Wong? I know you've got some strong thoughts here. I wouldn't say strong. I just I think they both play close to eighty. Um, 
Wong is obviously a lot younger and a lot more unproven, but also has the, the huge upside. He's also more expensive than Tupanua. And the question that I, I keep asking myself is, there's always these gun back rowers, Egan Butcher, Nat Butcher, Angus Crichton, but Tupanua has always been there. The minute he's not injured, he's, he's straight back into the team. Like Trent Robinson always gets him in the squad. And that's what I always just keep going back to. It's like, if I can't split them and I don't want both, why not go the cheaper one? Who do I think will have the highest score this season? It's undoubtedly Wong. But how how far apart are they going to be? I, is it going to be the eight points they're priced at? And I don't think it is. Uh, I think Tupanua could average somewhere in the mid to high 50s. So like a 56 to a 58. And I think Wong's maybe at like a 59 to 61. So I don't see them being all the worlds apart. Um, but I just keep coming back to the fact that Tupanua, whenever he's fit, Robinson just gets him straight back in. No, I'm with you. And I don't want to answer this one, but uh, Greg M's got Josh Alloye as a sneaky value pick. Um, no. I've I've been known to ruin people's hopes and dreams. So, um, no, look, I, I, like, rather than just laughing and saying no, he probably should say why. Um, but you got you got Paseko, Sipley, and and Jerbo. Uh, I know that Sipley's out for four weeks with suspension, but then you've got Nathan Brown um, on the bench there as well. Jerbo plays massive minutes. And, you know, both the edges play big minutes as well. So I just don't see enough of an impact for, for Aloye um, to, to be relevant. Um, it's just there's too many mouths for me. Yep. Um, speaking of too many mouths, uh, Tom's asking, what do we think of Dylan Lucas as a pick? And I'll grab this one to start. I do really like Dylan Lucas, um, and he looked great in the trials. Uh, we've got Kai Paul Pierce in the wings. Um, we've heard Jacko Hastings saying, be patient with him. I'm just worried that Dylan Lucas starts off really well. Kai Pierce Paul comes in, um, eats away at his minutes a little bit to start off with, and then eventually could even take his spot. They're both really exciting. There's lots of question marks, and there's too many question marks for me to take the plunge. Uh, round zero, round 1.1, or even um, heading into round two? Yeah, if you had to gamble on one of them, you gamble on on Piers Paul because he's 100k cheaper. Um, but there's also reports getting around today from Code, which is the Telegraph, that Piers Paul is very much in contention to start, like like closer than we think to start. So I'm very tempted to just run with him because I think if, if they're weighing up the fact that he is, or I also love that we charge for our team reveals, but if people just piece what we say together, they could probably get a fair <laughs> idea know. of what our teams they look know. like. Um, but like, I'm very tempted to to run with Piers Paul on my bench because like, if they're thinking about starting him now, and he maybe doesn't start, like how far away is he? Like, it's going to have to take a few blinders from Lucas to to get that spot. Um, and at 550k, I, I think it's just a death wish waiting to happen. Like, can you stomach seeing? your 550k edge back row will be taken off after 50 minutes. Like that's not the greatest thing to think of. So I, I think to save yourself the headache, either find the cash for, for Kai or just forgo both of them until you get a clear idea in minutes. No, I'm with you. Uh, Nathan's got Wade e Egan as a possible pod to start. I know that we've really struggled with hookers. Um, he's just saying Warriors have looked solid to start. They looked great last year. Um, because he's went dill bags over Grant, I suppose. So he's trying to save some money, um, due that's to fair. the seven hundred and eighty k dill bags. So. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, the 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 benefit for Wade Egan is is his security and his minute security. Like he's one of the rare hookers that will pump you out seventy plus minutes. I just struggle to back a hooker after such a good attacking year last year. Like. Grant had the same amount of try or Grant had like nine tries last year, but Grant's done that for three or four years now. Like it might not be tries, but it might be try assists. Like he's always been there creativity wise. And we only just seen it with Egan. And it's an, it's a nice enough price to to look at and I can understand it. And the Warriors looked great. Um, you know, my stance on them having regression, maybe up in the air, but like, I just, I'd rather just spend the extra and get happy with the goal kicking or just take a punt on a little or going down uh, or even a cheese, like even a Brandon Smith who should have some, you know, bounce back, um, especially with no Watson on the bench. I just, Egan's a guy where you're having to back in attack. 
and I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, like he went on that, you know, fantastic run where he scored a fair few tries and then they dried up and, you know, he wasn't as good. He did keep holding on and going ahead, but I see him as a draft pick with high upside. But, you know, when he pumps out a 30, you're going to be disappointed. When he pumps out an 80, you're going to be excited. But I think there's going to be a lot more 30s than 80s this year. Yeah, shock horror. Hooker that scores lots of tries and averages well, stops scoring tries and didn't average as well. That's that's a case of yep. what it is. So uh, swings yep. around. That's... Um, mate, Logan's back in the chat. Um, how many minutes do you expect Royce Hunt to play? Because um, there was a bit of news today. I mean, if if I can get 30 minutes out of Royce, that's that's great. And and you may be sitting there going, oh, well, 30 minutes is awful. Uh, Royce Hunt's got one of the best PPMs in the game. Uh, and 30 minutes for Royce Hunt's about 40 40 points. Um, so if we can creep that up to say 32, 33, then you're looking at a really, really good value. Uh, the question with Royce is that he's always had a limited motor. Um, but if you're looking at it being like, well, I only need 35. Like people are sitting there saying, well, I need 55 minutes out of Flegler. Like if you're needing 32, 33 minutes out of Royce Hunt to get 10 points less for 20 points, for 20 minutes less, then I think it's a nice little gamble. Um, I would just love for Fanukin to be out, not him be in which is all the talk is he is so i would i would much rather know for Nukin, but uh i still think it's an okay gamble in saying that um tom hazelton has the same ppm he's a couple of k more um if, if whoever which whichever one of them stuck so i don't think for Nukin starts a prop like i think he either comes off the bench or starts at 13 and mckinnis comes off the bench whoever whoever starts i'm i'd be keen on out of uh hazelton uh or or end or like I, there's no guarantee that Rudolph starts. Um, yeah. Or, or Royce Hunt. No, I agree with you there. Um, Benny McDermott is asking our thoughts on Brandon Smith. I'll grab it for start. Cause I'm, I got asked it on X today and I'm just not sure what's changed for Brandon Smith. Like everyone considered him, you know, a really good option because he was changing team much like your Flegler or whatever. And then he's changed team and, it was much of the same. Um, I'm just not sure what changes this year. Even the way that the, how would I say, that the bench is made up for the Roosters, it's just a lot more, you know, second rowers, blokes that can rotate through the middle. I don't expect to see him move to the middle that much throughout the game. I just think we're going to get much the same as what we got last year. And that doesn't excite me to pay 474k for a guy that you know might just touch the 500s and then drop as low as 430 throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, there's a fine line between stats and sort of narrative driven, and I think Brandon Smith is very much a narrative driven option this year. Uh, last year, we we looked at stats and we we knew that if he played big minutes, he would score really well. Uh, I think this year it's a case of okay, second season now, like the first year, not good. Like, we know that you can play better. And he, he did play well in parts. You know, he's now had a second full preseason. He's probably more ingrained into the culture. And let's not forget, like, the Roosters had a pretty uh, tumultuous, like, off-season um, with Angus Crichton and everything like that. And there was also the World Cup last year as well, which Brandon Smith featured a, a heavy part in um, for the Kiwis. So, you know, he's had no footy over the over the Chrissy break. So there's always a chance that he does bounce back um, with a with a clear preseason and, and just a, a second season under Robbo, like I said, it's not for me. But at 470k, like he could definitely average like 57, 58, which is 10 points, which is huge. Especially hooking um, with how grim it is. So leading into this one, wouldn't you take the cheese for an extra 27k over Little? Says Anthony. Uh if if no Maholan or or. Marshy, I'm taking little, one hundred percent. But if you see one of those, like I'd much rather gamble on Sand and Smith not playing big minutes at hooker than Marshy or Mahal. And like, I think they play probably twenty five thirty, whereas Sand and Smith maybe plays fifteen. Like, if I'm gambling between those two, I'd rather the Roosters bench for cheese. But like I said, that's what I said with the start of the show with little. Like, it's 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 very easy for me to sit here and say, oh well, if he plays seventy, lock him in. But we don't know that until next week, so. If you're confident that that one of those two utilities does get named for the dragons, then obviously you jump on on uh, cheese. Jeez. 
But if, you, if you're not confident or you're not too confident on cheese, that's what I was saying. Like, make sure you've got cash in the bank to get yourself to an appy or get yourself to a grant um, if it does go tits up next week at TLT for, for that Dragon's bench. Um, I know I've just hit you with three in a row, but I can't cop this. Major Fishing Adventures asking thoughts on why the Roosters are going to win 13+. plus. Um, they're not. Um, I think the um, you got to back the ped- pedigree in the Broncos. They were real good last year. What a, They've lost Capewell and they've got Piakura. They've lost flags in the front. Um, the Roosters were really ordinary, and they looked really ordinary in trials. Um, I mean, if you're popping into sports bet at the moment um, – I'm presuming you're going to get good odds for the Roosters 13 plus, but I'd be willing to double down that they will not win. Well, we need we need the Roosters to lose by like seven for our multi. Yeah. So we're really hoping that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, mate, would you like to explain to Paul Bark um, how much time before kickoff will teams be finalised? They have a 24 hour kickoff, and um, then where do they go from there? Yeah, so key dates for footy fans is 4 o'clock on a Tuesday. It's when everyone's team gets named. Uh, and then you've got 24 hours before the kickoff. So if a kickoff's at 8.05 on a Thursday, uh, at 7.05, they cut the teams down to 19, I want to say, um, or 18, either or. And then an hour before the game time, so it would be 7.05 on a Thursday, they cut it down again to the final 17, and that's when any changes happen. Uh, a winger moves to centre a prop moves to the bench. That's You'll know all of that an hour before, and that's confirmed. So um, 24 hours before a game and an hour before a game, your key talking points for uh, yeah any teamless changes. But uh, as for Supercoach as well, obviously this se- this season's a bit different. Um, the only players that are going to get locked out are your Vegas players. So if you have 25 players in your squad and you have five Vegas guys, then you can still make 20 trades next week for like, nothing like it's free to just move people around uh as long as they haven't played obviously um well said uh max mcmillan is asking thinking of peacock uh the panasini as a pod to start the year four percent owned low downside good draw one extra year experience do we think he could have a higher ceiling this year well as you know, we get a lot of our stats off NRL Supercoach stats. And I pressed the wrong button and I started typing his name into um, my search bar. And um, now I've got rude things on my computer. So can you answer that whisperer? <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, so Penasini, I don't think he's got a better upside. I think he has better consistency. So I'm also just trying to pull up uh, his Supercoach stat scores. So, I mean, I don't think the ceiling changes, uh, especially in a non-dominant center role, like it's the worst spot to be right center for a lot of NRL teams because they prefer to go left and the wingers get more of the attacking stats. But I think he finds more consistency. I think you'll see less of these like 25 point games. Um, He went on horrendous. He, uh, he went on an horrendous run at the back end of the season, 45, 41, 37, 36, 41 to finish the season with a five run average of 40 compared to his full season average of 56. So he was averaging like 60 up until the back end and their draw wasn't easy. You had the Broncos, you had the Roosters and Penrith. Like it's not an easy way to finish the season. Uh, and the draw is good to start the season. So I'm I'm keen on Panasini. If you're not keen on like a RTS, one, why? But two, like I think Panasini could be a great, a great option, especially at 4% owned. Like, um, yeah, definitely another year old, another year wiser. Good draw. And yeah, I mean, we saw him capitalize on against crap matchups last year. I mean, 104 against the Dolphins, multiple 60s against bum teams, 74 against the Tigers, 98 against the Bulldogs. Um, like, yeah, he can do it. And it's a decent draw. So I don't hate it at all. And he's got good base too. He averages 33 just in pure base alone. So uh, elite numbers for a center. Yeah, no, great stuff from the Peacock. I think I picked him up in draft a couple of times this year. Pretty excited about that. Um, Joshy Bax um, is asking if Willison ends up playing off the bench tomorrow, will that impact your front row forward rotation? And then he's followed it up with, or is he straight up a void because Marty will always be in that mix? Um, you have just answered your question with my answer, Josh. <laughs> I've never been. I, I actually. I don't think I've ever owned Wilson or preseason. Like seriously, like I've, I may have chucked him in for a day or two, but like I've never seriously looked at him and been like, all right, he's my guy. 
Um, just because he's a shit price. He's like 277. Like he's not a huge, he's not a McKaylee where they're 230. Um, and yeah, I mean, if the talkies he's getting dropped after, not dropped, sorry, like if he's being benched for Marty for experience, then that's always going to be lingering. So I'd love to see consistent game time before I could even take the plunge on Willison. No, I agree with you. Um, look, we've had a lot of chat about front row forwards, so I am going to yes or no question, basically. Um, Cotter or Arrow, um, if you could have one. Cotter? If, if money's no issue, yeah. Cotter, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, and thoughts on paying up for Jack DeBallon. Um, Shockmaster, you're just going to have to look a little bit further back uh, once we release this one because we have covered name Jensen and Hunt. Um, but Jack DeBallon, um, look, good, but would you pay f- pay up in front row forward? No, I'd rather just get Cotter or then just pay up for Tarpany. Like, I also think the Shockmaster asked the exact same question about JV on like the last live stream we did. So yeah. I'll say the same thing. Like, he seems really keen on JDV, so don't let me sit here and tell you that JDV is not a good pick. And like, that's what I want to reiterate to people: like, I don't like JDV as a pick. Doesn't mean yeah. he's a bad pick. If you like him, feel free to. Because the same people, and I'm not trying to have a dig at Shockmaster here, but like, you'd feel terrible if JDV crashes over for a double and scores 110 in round one, and you didn't pick him because two spastics on YouTube said don't pick him. Like, if you like him, back you back yourself. Yeah, no, I'm just adding um, Luke Metcalf into my team as we speak. Um, Agent Cheese, um, we've had a lot of good chats over the last couple of days, Cheese, um, but could we have a Maju-RTS combo instead of RTS and May? And I might grab this one because if you have a Maju and RTS, price difference you find a way to have May because he's 400K. Um, I mean, you find Ma- a way Maju's to have Maju. Like, yeah. Maju's like very high 700s. Like it's like saying... Oh, do you think I should have Cleary and Hines, or do you think I should have Cleary and Caesar? Like, yeah, of course, go for the uh, go for go for Marju and RTS, but it's just going to leave you so thin elsewhere. Like, it's not a chalk and cheese question, my guy. Yeah, yeah, and you should probably have if you've got Marju and RTS, you're going to have another four hundred k guy. I'm not sure there's any other four hundred k guys that you should have over May. No, nah. and I'm going to leave that there. If it means that you have to not have. Maybe outside of Sean Lane. If it means that you have to run two 200K front row forwards, you have Marju, RTS, and May um, over whatever else you're planning. Yeah. Oh, but if you can make if you can make Marju and RTS work like viably, of course, of course you do. But it's like there's a massive price discrepancy between those two options. Yeah. Um, Selman Dayub, um, his wing centers are Marju. Jesse Arthurs, Salmon, Jed Cartwright, and Schiller. Um, do you want to have a little bit of a chat? He's asking your thoughts. Well, firstly, wing slash CTW, my man. CTW stands for center wing, so you don't need to put wing in the question. <laughs> don't be um, so savage. Second, secondly, go. you'll see that I got a uh, bit of a bit of a freshy, bit of a fresh cut today. Uh, and Jed Cartwright yeah, was looks in the good chair. too. Thank you, my man. Thank you. And Jed Cutter was in the chair next to me. Uh, I don't. I didn't ask him any questions, so I don't have any uh, hot takes to give you, unfortunately. But he's not going to play. Um, he didn't look <laughs> like a man that he didn't look like a man that was ready for uh, for round one. I just got that that vibe. But Marju, of course, Arthur's sure. I mean, if you if you're backing the Cobo and uh, and Arthur's combination, by all means, go for it. Salmon, yes. Jed Cutter, we've said he's not playing. Like, just take Burbo. Uh, just take Ethan Strange, Gamble and Kane Bradley if you think you'll get named. And Schiller, I mean, fuck, how can you put any faith in the Raiders that, that that just isn't named Ethan Strange? And even I can't put faith into him. Like, I don't know. Like, in- it's just, I feel like we've sacrificed a lot to get Marzu. And, like, he's he's a good player, but he's priced it like he's absolute fucking peak. And it's like he's he's a lot of cash. If we change him to a Terrell May, a, to a Terrell May, if we change him to a Talon May, well, there's 300k to fix up Jed Cartwright and and James Schiller. And yep. like what Marju might average 75, May match might average 60, but you're saving yourself 300k, and you can just fix up so much depth, which I think is going to be crucial. I like to think of James Schiller as a verb a little bit more than a player. Because 
James Schillering is coming in for week one and then you not seeing him for the rest of the season. I actually think this year's James Schiller could have a bit of last year's James Schiller about him, um, which is... He's got a bit of James Schiller about him, that kid. <laughs> me, me, Schiller. Picking, me picking Jacob Gagai. Yeah, yeah, like Jacob Gagai has a bit of James Schiller about him. Um, James Schiller also has a bit of a James Schiller about him this year. Like it just seems like he has these tremendous pre-seasons and then Ricky doesn't trust him when it comes down to it. Like he's going to go your savages. Um, he's got Seb Chris coming in. Um, he's still got Rapana in the mix. Um, like we were high on Chevy Stewart, but three weeks ago. Um, yeah, look, don't trust Ricky. Uh, find someone else for James Schiller. Yeah. Um, Michasho, uh, is Ben Hunt a viable option as an to Annie Pod Cleary? Dragon's draw is good until just after the Panthers buy. Um, no, there's 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 other halfbacks I'd, I'd anti Pod Cleary with, and it's not Ben Hunt. I'm just having a quick look at their draw because I. Shows you how little I've actually looked at uh, any Dragons assets. I've got the Titans, the Dolphins, the Cowboys, Manly, the Knights, Tigers, Warriors, Roosters. That's not bad. It's just fuck putting faith into Shane Flanagan. Like, he played, what, 60 minutes in the second trial? He scored 66 points with two tries. Like, that's nearly a full game. And he scored 30 points with that tries. I, just, I don't know. I'm not kidding. I just think he's priced at value. And then you're waiting for Cleary to drop in price. Like you want to grab somebody that's in and around that mix. And I'm not sure there is anybody in and around that mix that will raise in price. Like you've got your Sam Walkers, you've got your Adam Reynolds, you've got Moses for hundred K more. I'm not sure they're going to rise to meet Cleary's price at all. Um, regardless of if Cleary drops hundred K or not. Um, I just don't, see the upside in any other halfback which is why our halfback chat which was before we found out Aiden Caesar wasn't kicking was really go Cleary or Hines and then go Caesar. I don't think halfback's the one you need to fuck around with. The problem with Hunt is when it goes well, like his top score last year was 103 and he had 100 so when it goes really well, it's not even that good and when it goes bad it's a, a 13, a 21, a 33 a 24 a 29 like it the the good's not that good and the bad's pretty bad so um not for me unfortunately um major fishing adventures back again and i tell you what that is a huge fish um best pick out of jerry salmon hutcho arthurs or any other center wing that's under 400k I mean, it, um, it's, in his, it's in his profile picture it's the fish Fish. I mean, Sherry. Sherry's no guarantee to even be named. Um, there was some reports around today that uh, Jacob Kiraz was going to be playing centre if he can get through training um, with Blake Wilson on the wing, and that's just going to see Sherry miss out, which is what we all expected in the preseason. We did find it weird that he was just playing all of a sudden. Hutchinson is just man. <laughs> sure, uh, Arthur's probably has the most upside out of this list, but it's he's also got probably the worst draw. Um, any other center wing under 400k? None that I can think of. I mean, you can spend up a little bit and get like a Zach Laybutt. Um, but for me, it's Salmon, and I don't love it either. Like he's in my team, but I, I don't love seeing his name there. I prefer both Burbo, and I think we all have Burbo. Um, so that's no surprise. But I actually prefer Jack Bostock over. Well, the the Stop. money you save on Arthur's over Jack Bostock, and Bostock over Salmon. I'm just I'm just worried about Kurt Mann. I'm worried about Curran. I'm worried about Salmon. I'm worried that they were just trying things during the buy and we are uh, during the trial period. And we just end up getting a good Curran in a little bit. Um, and then Salmon just goes back to that 20 minutes off the bench guy. I don't know. Bostock's at least cheaper than everybody else and looks to have solidified that wing spot. Yeah. Um, is Firma, Lukey, Lane, and Piakura loading up too much in second row? Asked Steezers. No, I've got six playable options at set center to our right now, so no. Yeah. 
Yep. I'm with you. I think that looks great. And then what have you got a couple of couple of two hundred K guys that you hope that they get there? My that's only concern the, is maybe yeah. yeah, maybe it's you're gonna have to downgrade a, a firma to try and get one of those guys up to somebody that's actually going to play. That's the thing, and that's that's what I'm like. I've been happy with my team for the last week, but what I haven't been happy with is having to rely on Villiami Fafita and Kane Bradley. So that's what I've had to retinker. Um, and I've finally found a spot where I'm comfortable with it. But yeah, it's round one. Like people, like let's remember that like the year that I, well, I only, I came 110th two years ago. I don't have the stats from when I came 40th and 50th from like five years ago, but I do have the stats from when I came 100th and my team value rose. 60%. Like, remember that we have, we all have the same budget to play with in round one and, it- and all of our teams aren't going to look great. Like we have to take sacrifices somewhere um, and don't just expect to have Cam Murray for feeder and someone else that's good. Yeah. Or Kawatu, like from round one, like it's not possible. So we have to take some kind of hits somewhere. And there's a reason why your round one score is terrible and your round 23 score is great because we build to it. So don't beat yourself up too much if you do have to sacrifice on one of those four to get some depth elsewhere. Um, what do we think? And Logan back again. What do we think about starting with Tedesco? Um, do you want to grab this one? Yeah, I can grab it. I mean, I need to see it. Like, I need to see him be more of a team player. Like, I need to see him trust his outside men more and not just try and do it himself because that's been the Tedesco problem for the last two years and we discussed this on the fullback pod the other day like his his scores are progressively going down and down and down i just i need to see it like it's just it's so hard especially with the roosters draw the roosters draw is terrible the price is tempting he he's a guy that's sort of fixture proof he can score against anyone but i just think with how good the other guys are i'd need to see something from teddy to to really show me that he's worth picking yeah, I think I'm locked in to go on Primo Primo, but if I was looking to save a bit of money, it would probably be to a Pappy over at Tedesco. Um, and, like, you know, if I want to see them, I suppose, revitalize their career again, um, yeah, I'd probably take a punt on Pappy over over Tedesco just with that downward trajectory he's had for the last couple of years. Father time remains undefeated. and He's only 30. Yeah, but he's been around since about he's been about fourteen. Like that's the problem. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just I just need to see it more. Um, we'll probably go for another twenty, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, we're starting to run out of questions anyway, so we'll go yeah. for another twenty or so. Get your questions in at the end. We'll just rapid fire a few. But I think we've answered a lot of the stru- the structural questions that people are struggling with. Like I don't love the questions of oh, do you prefer player A or B? Because yeah, that's boring. I'd rather just talk about structures. And I think the questions tonight have been good, but we've still got a few rolling yeah. in. Um, here's one for me from Braden. If I'm going with Sam Hughes as my front row forward two, who's my front row forward three and four? Um, look, it's, <laughs> it's, um, Thomas McKayley and Liam Henry. It's going really light on. Um, but I'm not going to be looking to play in front row forwards anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm just hoping that they can make me a little bit of money. Um, Valame at center, um, from Kieran Weber. Does he even play? Yeah, that's my concern. We've seen from the trial um, that it, it looks like it's Zach Labart and Carl Felt, so I just don't even think Valamay gets a start. Yeah. As good as he was last year, like it's kind yeah. of like if Dean Mariner didn't get named, Valamay was the Dean Mariner of North Queensland. Um, yeah. But it looks like they're just going to go with Felt, and if Felt has a couple of bad games, then we see him again. Um, but, yeah, I'm just not sure we see him round one. Um. Do we think Corey Jensen steps up this year with no Capewell from from Nathan? No, unless your name is uh, Pat Carrigan or Payne Haas, you play 40 minutes, not a minute more, not a minute less. Um, Anthony McElroy has Joe Chan. Um, look, Viliami Fafita's there, but we just Joe have Chan. to wait till TLT. Shout out to Joe Chan. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, mate, we are actually running out of questions pretty quickly. Um, do you think Schuster hurts Burbo uh, from no. Duncan D's nuts? 
No, like I think people are enamored by Schuster. I don't really know why. Um, Burbo was winning the spot. <laughs> like, like I had, I had rel, I had very good mail, and I didn't post it because I don't like posting unconfirmed rumors. But like, I had a very good mainly source that was telling me like this is very early January when they just come back that Schuster is not looking good. Burbo's winning. And that was from like the early January. And obviously the injury hasn't helped Schuster, but I was very confident Burbo style. Like if you look at my, my X feed, like I was pumping the Burbo train quite early. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not happy to see Schuster injured, but like, I'm happy to see Burbo finally get shot. Like I'm not concerned by, by Schuster at all. Like not one bit. Schuster, like, Sniffs around because apparently he's earning so much money. Yeah, and I think he I had think his shot. Like, like he had his shot, didn't he? Of course he did. Of course he did. And, and like, I still think there's a player there, but like, is it at Manly? Um, someone just said, <laughs> Arsene Jack and just said, Schuster is Zion Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of fair. Which is kind of fair. Um, no, like, I, I feel really bad for Schuster because I think it's the Luke Brooks syndrome where, like, the media just take his like total pay. Like, if you win Dally M, if you win the World Cup for your country, if you win all these things, we will pay you a million bucks a year. And I think the media just take that and go, he's on a million bucks a year. I think they did it with, with Brooks too. Like they, they they put these young players in the headlights and just get crucified when they don't play well. Um, I feel really bad for that. Um, but in saying that, I don't feel bad for Ben Trovojevic finally getting a crack. Like, let's not pretend like Burbo's a slam dunk. Like, he is injury prone, the same as... His, his brother Tom, but at the price, at with the really nice jewel, um, yeah, I'm tempt- I, I, obviously he's, he's a st- I'm starting with him, but I'm not worried about Schuster at all. Um, Lachlan Tricky, and this was an interesting one. Um, mm. Is Jacob Alec an yeah, option yeah. for four weeks at second row if um, Dave, um, he's meaning Fafita from the Titans, of course, is out? A week ago, I would have said yes. But the talk is that Fafita's probably going to be back in round three. Like the talk is like he's pretty sweet to go. So I just think it's probably a tad too risky. But I do like the shout. I like that you're playing a little bit of eyes up. Um, but yeah, I just think with Fafita saying he's pretty much good to go for round three, I'd give it a miss. Yeah. And look, Firma has sort of worked his way into my team. Like it looks like he's going to get uh, that great left edge at least to start. I do think he loses it when Fafita comes back, um, which is always a worry. But, yeah, hopefully he's got uh, some really good scores in his rolling average then. Um, Tom's asking, will Curran and Salmon both start from the Bulldogs, uh, one in lock and one in second row? Uh, no. No. <laughs> uh, there's no way that Preston loses a the spot. There's no way for the kickout doesn't start either. So uh, I think you just have to get over. We talk about a lot of preseason, that psychological barrier of picking players off the bench. Um, and you just have to understand that bench players can play the same minutes as starters. Um, I don't think we want to touch too much about Ravalawa at 600k. Um, there's a lot better options at 600k, isn't there? Not giving it airtime. <laughs> um, I might grab this one. Who are the options to Annie Pod Cleary? If you don't have Dylan Brown and you are uh, an absolute sucker for chaos. Like you drive sometimes on the wrong side of the road just to see what happens. You can get Mitch Moses, but there's really no options. I don't think SJ can keep that up. I don't want to pay that much money for Cleary either, which was why Caesar was in my plans to start the year. But with Caesar not goal kicking, I honestly cannot see a world where you can anti-pod Cleary and be in the top 40,000 in three weeks' time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not keen on Moses. So, like, I'm not the guy to ask about anti-potting at halfback because I've always just been a Cleary Hines guy since day one um, to the point where if Hines is out round one, I'm still holding him. Like, that's how much I hate the other options at, at yep. Hooker. At Hooker? I heard at you Hooker. call him... I heard you call him Mitchell Noses today, and I really like I him. So, like, I thought I was really funny because someone was like, what do you think about N- Moses? And I just said no. And I was like, oh, I can change the M to the N. But I didn't realize it spelt nose. I was like a fucking <laughs> moron. <laughs> I still laughed. Um, look, uh, Brooks over... 
Brooks over Brown. Um, I think it's been pretty well documented, your opinion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I might grab I'm it. Leave, I just I'm think leave this one. Yeah, I'm grabbing it for the integrity of the podcast. Um, look, basically the way oh, – look, honestly, any attack on that side is going to go through Tommy Turbo. That is why we're high on Tommy Turbo. That is why Turbo has touched $100,000 in the in the past in Supercoach. Um, $100,000 or a million? Oh, sorry, a million. Um, he's 800000 now. Tur- um, Turbo but- at 100K. <laughs> <laughs> Lock it you know in, what? Eddie. You know what? There would be there would be still people that wouldn't pick him because he's injury prone. Oh, yeah. Look, I just can't get around Brooks. And look, kudos if it pays off. But I think the way that Brooks plays in a better team, he got he had the keys to the city, and he's only five hundred and sixty k from the Tigers. Yeah, I am not touching thing, him. Yeah. My my thing with him is like people are like, oh well, he's going to improve. And I mean, I think he'll improve immensely from a footy standpoint. But from a super coach standpoint, when he was given every fucking chance to, to take kicks, to 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 you know play make, to do all this, like he got so many touches at the Tigers, which you know ge- generated that fifty five average. I just don't see it like being the same at Manly. And I use Kieran Four. Like, Kieran Four is my reference point because in two thousand twenty one, Kieran Four averaged forty nine. And at that st- at that time, they were the same age. Like Brooks was twenty nine, Foreman was twenty nine at the time. And I I just don't see this mad improvement. Like it, like my hot take was Brooks averaged under fifty, but realistically, like I think he just fifty two, fifty three. Like that's just I think a very slight regression. And it's not because he's a shit player. I think he he'll, he'll get incredibly better. But people are just expecting every time he touches the ball, he gives it to Turbo and Turbo scores every time. Like I saw someone today say he's gonna get three try assists a game, so he's gonna average sixty try assists this season. Like, come on, like let's be serious here for a minute. Like, he will be good for Manly. Um, weirdly enough, I remember I remember being on a podcast back in like twenty twenty, and I was like, Luke Brooks should sign for Manly, and this was like four years ago. Um, and now I'm glad it's finally happening, but I just don't think it's going to like translate for super coach i think he'll be what he is um look uh what are your thoughts on some people nothing hooker from super coach experience um, shout out super coach experience <laughs> 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 I, uh, I mean people with nothing hooker really could be anything in this game um yeah that's, that's no just... that, i think that was maybe a little bit of clickbait. I don't think anybody's I actually think, going I think to people say Hooker. things. I think people say things for clickbait and then act surprised when other people also say things for clickbait. So I'm going to leave that one. I don't want to incriminate myself any further. Um, no, no. Mate, um, I'm probably going Gagai over Schiller as your last center wing because at least we know that he's going to play one game. But also we know that he won't play at all. Like, I could see a world where Ricky just picks Schiller in the fucking 17 jersey and plays yeah. him for, like, five minutes a game. <laughs> oh, far out. Um, Joel here's got thoughts on Hammer at 600K. I actually love Hammer. Um, yeah, I have Hammer in my team. Um, I think I nearly convinced you to put Hammer in your team at, at certain points throughout the year, but I just think it's a tremendous draw. Uh, Hammer's been great. I think he's only going to get better. Um, and even if he just scores at value, I'm really happy with that for the first probably five or six games while that draw really opens up. Um, mate, there's people making fun of me for smashing ciders. Um, never saw much of Firma play before his last injury. Is he an option uh, at 460K? Oh, Go watch 2021. He was unreal. Um, the, yeah. thing with Firma, the thing with Firma is it's like it's dependent on what side he plays. Like if he plays on the right, I think he's fine. If he plays on the left, he's like slam dunk. But Fafita was so good on the left. But in saying that, Firma lined up on the left in the trial. Fafita didn't play. With the round two bye, I think we can we can wait. Like he's not going to go up until round four. So you can wait. Like if Pia Cora sucks, then you can move off him and move to Firma. Um Rather than like starting with him, so I would probably just let it go to the go to the, to the keeper. Um, mate, there's not 
too much there. I think that we can just about wrap this up. Um, I think we've answered a lot of these questions um, sort of at the start of the podcast. I'm probably just going to finish with um, to James Jord. Is Ethan Strange a lock? No, he's probably more of a 5 eighth in my opinion. <laughs> In all seriousness, I wouldn't even call Joe Tarpany a lock in this Raiders team. Like, who fucking knows? Like, obviously, yes, great joke, great dad joke. But, like, Thanks. Means who, a lot. Fucking, who knows? Like, Ricky could just wake up and say, you know what? I am going to play Tom Starling at six. And I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I, I mean, like, Ricky does that. Um Sorry, we've we've missed one as we go through. Um, do we think Safarth yep. starts at lock and makes yes, money? Yes, yes. Yep. Um, oh, look, I think that we're going to wrap that up. Um, Wayne's, I suppose, tempted by starting with Sonny Luke round one. Um, I look, just wonder Wayne, how that went for you last year. I was going to say, um, Wayne's, got, Wayne's got Mulligan in his last name. Like, surely after last year, we should just call a Mulligan and be like, all right, give up. But yep. in saying that, Sonny Luke's probably going to start round one. <laughs> probably yeah. scores 50 points. I mean, yeah, look, you could. Um, yeah, look, yeah, you yeah, absolutely could. Um, and I'm not going to say no to anything, especially when I'm starting Sam Hughes at front or forward two at this stage. But, oh, mate, I just, I don't think Sonny Luke will ever touch my team, no matter how good he goes. Just remembering the year that was last year. Uh, rapid fire. Duncan asks, what do I ask my barber for? I just asked him to fuck my shit up. Um, Michael Griffin says, could you mention the league code one more time? I know that there's a, there's a, there's a link in the description that takes you to it. Uh, do you yep. have the league code? Yeah, handy? it's, it's seven, 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 one, four, one for NRL and nine, one, three, three, five, one, uh, for next week when you join our insight AFL and be a part of the super coach world cup. And lastly, probably the most important question, James George asks, is Hines injured? Now, we don't have concrete word. I mean, Supercoach have flagged him one to two weeks, uh, and that's just due to that quad tightness. I've asked, I'm very fortunate to know a few of the Sharks guys in the junior coaching ranks. So they hang around the first team all the, day, all the time. Um, Hines has been training with the rehab group, but all the internal talk is that he's sweet for round one. Um, you know, obviously, if there's a slip up with rehab, then that's going to put a spanner in the works, but they don't play until goodness me, all teams. They don't play until, uh, Oh, they play pretty early. Shit. I thought they played later. They play the, uh, the 6 PM Friday game in New Zealand. So they would probably fly over Thursday morning. Like it's not a long flight. So they'd probably fly over Thursday morning. So that gives him another pretty much five days. Um, Look, all the talk is he's fine. It's just precautionary. But him with the rehab group is a tad concerning. Um, but yeah, we'll play it by ear. I'm still going to be holding. I just, I don't like anyone else. I also, also like one more thing before we go is like, if you want to start without Hines and bring him in in round two or round three, that's fine. But yep. do you have the discipline to not touch that money? Like if you have a million bucks for Hines and then you put it to Moses, you've got an extra 200K. Like, what happens in round one when one of your players sucks? Like, do you spend yeah. it? Because that's the fucking tempting temptation. And then round three rolls around, Heinz is there, and you're like, well, shit, I've got, to, I've got to use a boost to get him back in. And it's like, we could have avoided this by either just holding him or not being ill-disciplined with our funds. And what and what'd you get, 20 points for that whole exercise? Yeah, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. All right, this is good. Hopefully it helped people's teams. Um. Yeah, Discord's in the in the in the bio. If you want to join Unlimited, it's twenty five bucks. It gets you all the sports. There's details in the Discord there as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back on on Tuesday for the like official official season launch, which is nice. Nah, I'm excited. Look, thanks for coming on, having a beer with me, um, and um, yeah, yeah we'll... high alcohol concentrate this one. I mean, I saw you. I saw you pour vodka in it before, so oh, I yeah, know that. Right. Um, I've, I've, I've done. A whole bottle of vodka, and I'm fine. I'm sweating. <laughs> Mate, you guys have listened to an Insight Fantasy Sports podcast. Go the Broncos. Cheerio.